Good evening, friends. I deem it a honor and privilege to stand before you as the 62nd President of the Institute of Charter Schools of India. I begin my journey seeking your good wishes, blessings of all the past presidents present here, and your active participation in helping me to take the Institute to greater heights. Having said this, it has been a very long journey for me, the last 23 years, to be precise, to have been associated with the activities of the Institute. It's been an exciting journey, a pleasant journey, and I cherish every moment of my journey, what I've had in the Institute, and I think the credit should go to all the members of the profession, the, all the students of the profession, and I can say it's the most happening profession in the country today, and I'm proud to be the leader of this profession. Having said this, I'm extremely fortunate to have my distinguished council colleague, Mr. Manoj Fadlis, as the vice president of the institute, a very simple, humble, down-to-earth member of the council from Indore. And I can say that it last 40 days has been very good. We've been working together. And we all know that Manoj Fadlis is a taskmaster, done a lot of work on the Accounting Standards Board, and I'm sure with his support, both of us as a team, we'll be able to see that the Institute moves to greater heights, and we'll be able to take the flag of the Institute to greater heights. Distinguished galaxy of past presidents present here. Yes, in 1990, when I qualified as a Chartered Accountant, we had a similar meeting like this in Bangalore, when Mr. Avrin Dalal was there. I had the opportunity of meeting him, along with my father, who was there with me, introduced me to Mr. Dalal. I was able to sort of participate and, you know, play a very active role in the Institute of Activities, then as a student's chairman. Then, of course, Mr. N.P. Sarda used to visit Bangalore very frequently, Mr. Y.M. Kale. And Mr. Y.M. Kale is so popular in Bangalore, even to this day, people remember him. Mr. B.P. Rao was the vice president. He was from Bangalore. That was 20 years back, and Mr. Kale used to come regularly. Then Mr. Mukun Chitale, Mr. Kamlesh, you can say, are all known figures in Bangalore. They're extremely popular in the South, and whenever we go, wherever we go, we find that they've, they've got a very good name for themselves, for the kind of contribution they've done to the profession. And my compliments to all of them for the good work they've done. And of course, finally, Uttam Prakash Agarwal, I had the opportunity of working with Uttam Ji. When he was the president, I was in the council as the chairman of the IT committee. A go-getter, a taskmaster, called Spade a Spade, and I'm sure all of you know him more than me. He's been one person who has been, you know, sort of uh, doing things differently. That's what that's what I can talk about. Them. But I'm so happy to have at least um, six past presidents present here. And as Manojji rightly said, your blessings are required for us to help us to steer the institute to new frontiers and I'm sure we'll have your blessings in abundance. Having said this, my compliments to Mangesh Kinare for the good work he has done, for having backed the Best Region Award. And friends, let me tell you, I've traveled across the country and the Western Leader Regional Council is one of the most active regions, a very vibrant region, a happening region. And the compliments should go to all the members here in this region. And today, this morning, we had the opportunity of meeting all the 31 chairmen and the office bearers, the various branches, they're all an excited team of uh, committed leaders and I'm sure Western India Regional Council will do extremely well. So once again, I'm very confident under the dynamic leadership of Anil Bandari, uh, I'm sure the Western India Regional Council and I can assure my whole hearted support to you, Anil ji. And uh, <laughs> this morning when I landed from Mumbai, we went to the venue that is Hotel Trident in Alibagh where the orientation program was there. And um, we found that the entire atmosphere there at the orientation program are keen to do new things. And I can assure all the branch chairmen present here that we are committed to you. We are there to work with you and let's work together as a team and do something good for the profession. Julfe Shah, the vice chairman, Shruti Shah, Girish Kulkarni, all the distinguished galaxy of regional council members present here. My compliments to all of you for the good work you're doing. And of course, if I am the vice president here today, sorry, the president, 
the credit should go to all my distinguished council members here who have elected me to lead the profession. I would be failing in my duty if I don't thank them honestly, profusely, from the bottom of my heart. Mr. Pankaj Jain, Chairman of the Ethical Standards Board, again, no Pankaj Jain for the last about seven years, a very dedicated member of the council. And this year, as the Chairman of the Ethical Standards Board, he holds a very important portfolio in setting up a new ethical framework for the entire profession, which is absolutely essential and critical the way the profession is growing. I think a robust ethical framework is essential and I'm sure Pankaj Jain will do a lot of good work in this particular committee. Then we have Sanjeev Maheshwari who is the chairman of the Accounting Standards Board, another important committee of the institute. And now that we are moving to an IFRS convergence era, wherein Institute of Chartered Accounts of India would say yes, we are ready to move into the convergence mode. Sanjeev Maheshwari has put in a lot of work and my compliments to Sanjeev for the good work he has done. Then Nilesh becomes the chairman of the Financial Reporting Review Board, looks into the, reviews the financial statements of the top corporates in the country, and today is also a member of the QARC. Becomes, Nilesh has done an excellent job, and I'm sure we will continue to see his performance. Tarun Gia, new entrant to the profession, heading the Committee for Members Industry, successfully conducted campus in 15 locations. 35% of the members registered for the campus interviews were secured, the secured job, the highest in the history of the institute. My credit to Tarunjian. <laughs> Niharji, a very silent member of the council, always sober, simple, and he's heading the International Taxation Committee. And one single agenda which I have given to him is to enable more and more people to get into international taxation because I see a huge opportunity for our members in this space. And coming from a city like Bangalore, I see a lot of opportunities for chartered accountants in the international taxation space and I have just told him you need to enable more and more young professionals to get into the space of international taxation. He has a huge agenda, he has announced his webcasting schedule for the entire year and I am sure we will see a lot of action from the international taxes committee front. Profan would be heading a new committee this year, a young members empowerment committee which we have set up for the first time and knowing Profan very well for his work in the regional council, I'm sure he'll do a great job in forging all the young members across the country today. 50% of the membership are young members. I'm sure he'll be able to bring them together as a vice chairman of the board of studies. He'll carry out a lot of student activities in the entire country. And finally, Srinivas Joshi, who's a member of the examination committee, all important committee with which our past presidents have very rightly said. Our examination is one of the best in the country, a robust examination system. And I can say with pride, yes, in fact this morning when I was coming from Bangalore, I had a, a, you know, one of the senior executives of UB sitting next to me. And he said, he told me, Mr. Rabu, why is your pass percentage so low? I failed to understand. And I told him, sir, it is 3.5. He said, no, it is not right. You are disappointing a lot of students uh, you know, with the low pass, pass percentage. And he took so much of interest to discuss with me as to why the pass percentage is low. I casually asked him, sir, anyone in your family is doing CA? He said, yes, my son is doing CA. <laughs> <laughs> then I had to change my strategy to how I should reply. Then I asked him, is he going for tuitions? He said, yes. Then, sir, I asked him, do you think he's reading his study material? He said, I'm not very sure. I just told him, please go back to your home and ask him whether he's reading from the study material. Because one thing, friends, which I would like to share with all of you today is that in the examination committee, when we look into the performance of the students, one common feedback we get from all the examiners is that the quality of the, the answers that is being written by the students is not up to the mark. They are not referring the study material at all. Today, students go to coaching classes, they refer the coaching class notes, and they are writing the examination, which is inadequate. So we are requesting all the members present here, you should go back to the officials, maybe call all the students together and just find out and I'm sure most of you tell you that they're not using the study material. This is a very dangerous trend. And we would like to communicate to all the students across the country that they need to prepare from the study material, suggested answers, revision test papers, or else they'll not be able to be able to do a good uh, you know, uh, quality of writing in the examinations. Yes, Srinivas Joshi is doing a good job. And definitely I would like to thank all my distinguished council members for the support they've extended to me and for having elected me as the president of the institute. Bhavna Doshi, Jayan Gokhale, I had the opportunity of working with them and also we have Mr. Gautam Doshi, done a lot of work for the profession. All the distinguished uh, invitees, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, it's a great honor for me to be amongst all of you towards uh, uh, this evening in Bombay. And I thought uh, it's a great opportunity for me to articulate my action plan. Every president, whenever he takes over the charge on 12th of 
February 2014, he presents an action plan and I have also presented an action plan to the council which I will quickly take you through maybe the next 8 to 9 minutes as to what exactly we plan to do for the year and where exactly each one of you sitting here could play a role in the action plan of the institute. It's not necessary for you to be a central council member, for you to be a regional council member to participate in the activities of the institute. Every member sitting here can play some good role in the activity of the institute and that is what I am one about, you know, explaining to you as to how you could play a role in the action plan. This is the action plan moving towards new frontiers. We would like to give a message to the society at last. Yes, here is an institute that is popular. Here is an institute that is dynamic. Here is a profession that is progressive and we would like to say that yes, our profession is moving towards new frontiers. When we talk about new frontiers, it connotes multiple things. Because today what is happening is our profession is moving to an era of specialization. Like in the medical profession, you find chartered accountants with specialized knowledge of forensic audit, international taxation, IFRS consulting, ERP implementation skills have, are in great demand. Industry is looking at child accountants with specialized skills. Practicing professionals having specialized knowledge are in great demand. And today we find that a lot of young professionals are getting to specialized areas. We would like to say that plenty of opportunities, plenty of frontiers are there for our members to get into. In addition to this, we also would like to say that yes, frontiers are opening up today. We are located in about 22 countries. We plan to add six more new chapters this year. And students who want to take up global careers can go anywhere around the world. And we would like to say that a lot of new frontiers are there. And we talk about reporting, financial reporting. Yes, financial reporting is undergoing a rapid change. We have the international financial report standards coming in. We have extensible business reporting already there. Integrated reporting is fastly picking up and yes, there are a lot of new things happening on the financial reporting front. So this is the theme for the year. We have identified 12 strategic focus areas which we would like to you know, focus on. The first focus area would be leadership and influence. The Institute of Chartered Accounts of India being the, um, you know, uh, the apex regulatory body in the country, we would like to demonstrate to the government, to the society at large that yes, we are leaders among leaders. We will continue to play an influencing role and as Uttamji very rightly said, we need to showcase to the government that yes, our institute, our profession can play a very important role and we are doing right that. We are in active engagement with the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Corporate Affairs and trying to see how best we can support them. But only one thing which I could share with all the members here is that when I had the opportunity of meeting the President of the President of India, Pranam Mukherjee, at Rashtrapati Bhavan last year, the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Manmohan Singh, Mr. Chidambaram, the Finance Minister, let me tell you frankly, friends, we all have a good praise about the profession, about the Chartered Accounting Fraternity. I think we should all be proud about it and the top leaders of the country speak good about you. <laughs> Having said this, we will try to support the Ministry of Corporate Affairs and the Investor Awareness Programs. We have taken a mandate of conducting 1,000 Investor Awareness Programs this year. We are also working closely with the Ministry of Finance with a lot of new initiatives in addition to the role we are playing in presenting a pre-budget memorandum, post-budget memorandum. And as Manojji rightly said, we will help the Ministry of Corporate Finance, uh, Corporate Affairs in speedy implementation of the Companies Act. Yes, there are a lot of challenges. Challenges we have discussed in the Council, we have received many feedback from the members across the country and four challenges which we currently, the profession is facing is on the rotation of auditors, the cap on the number of auditors, the definition of fraud and NAFRA. We have debated in great, great detail. We have met the Honorable Minister of Corporate Affairs, Sachin Pilot. We have met all the bureaucrats there and we have tried to convince them that audit rotation is not okay. Today, India is a country dominated by small and medium practitioners. And we have said that audit rotation and cap on the number of audits should not be made applicable to private limited companies and one person companies. Regarding fraud, we have said they need to align the definition of fraud as what is stated in the standards and auditing. We have very clearly said the chartered accountant can't go about discovering all the frauds in the company. The definition of fraud is so huge, I think it will be very difficult and forensic audit is something I feel could be a new era in the auditing profession where more and more companies would look at chartered accountants to do forensic audit. NAFRA has been a cause of concern. We have said that it will be duplicating the role of the institute. We have tried to convince them. I am sure they have given us positive assurances. Maybe in the next one week we will get to know what will be the status because the draft rules are yet to be notified. But we are very confident that we will be get a, getting a positive response from the government on all the concerns that we have raised on the Companies Act. Having said this, friends, 
we are doing our regulatory role perfectly, I could say. Our district committee has disposed of all the cases before 2007, and maybe in the next one year, we'll be online, maybe all the cases before the institute will be uh, completed. Our ethical standards board, financial reporting review board, a peer review mechanism is working round the clock to enhance the quality of professional work. We had one of our class presidents talking about the quality of professional work. Yes, it is a concern, the quality of tax audits, quality of bank audits, quality of company audits. It is a matter of concern. The council is debating as to how best we can improve the quality of professional work. It is high on our agenda and I can assure all the members present here to say that yes, we will try to see how best we play an important role in empowering our members to do high quality work. Having said this, I would like to take you to the next stage of global recognition. As I said, a lot of opportunities for members in the overseas, especially in the Gulf region, in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, more than 10,000 CAs are there. In Australia also, there are a lot of opportunities. Singapore, there are plenty of opportunities. We want more and more young professionals to take up careers abroad. We will launch electronic welcome packs where every country specific details will be given in each of these welcome packs. So what is the visa requirements? What are the chapters, contact details of all the chapters and mutual recognition agreements we have entered into so that if a student wants to go to Dubai, he'll have the complete picture of what is happening in that country and we will be launching these welcome packs very shortly to enable our young members to take up global careers. Today, no longer the young members are interested to practice in Mumbai or Bangalore. They would like to explore the world and we would like to encourage them because today we find that the job opportunities are very attractive, very challenging and they are being paid fabulous packages. And during my experience of traveling around the world, I can only say that Indian child accountants are looked upon with high esteem. And whenever we talk to a top CFO or a top CEO of any company overseas, they just say Indian child accountants are the best in the world. So we want to we want to leverage and try to showcase to see how best our Indian CAs are accepted around the globe. Having said this, we'll also continue to enter into mutual recognition agreements with various other countries and see how best we can play an important role in facilitating members to go abroad. Members industry, 50% of our members are in the industry space. We are planning a lot of activities for them. We are requesting our chairman of various chapters to do activities for them. I am sure we, you will see a lot of action on the members industry. Members in practice, yes, the institute does a lot of activities. In fact, there is always a feeling in the members industry that the institute doesn't do anything for them. For the members in practice, we have an SMP committee. We're doing a lot of support services to them. We are giving them concessional professional indemnity insurance, concessional auto insurance, concessional medical insurance. We're giving them free accounting software, billing software, IFRS, uh, you know, audit tools, various things we are providing to the members in the SMP committee. And we'd like to continue our journey in this by providing concessional software for the benefit of our members. SMP is close to our heart and we would like to tell the SMPs that if they want to grow, if they want to compete with the big firms, they need to specialize, they need to take up new lines of activity and now that we permit them to set up management consulting firms and LLBs, we would like to tell the SMPs that yes, they should take in new talent, attract new talent and try to see how they can start new verticals in their setup. And SMP committee is actively working on empowering the SMPs in the country. This year, we have formed two new committees for the first time, Women Empowerment Committee and Young Members Empowerment Committee. We realize that 22% of our membership are women today. Their challenges are different. Today we find that many, I'm sure many of the members present here, when you come across women members, they have one common challenge that they're disconnected from the program. First five years, everything is fine, they're able to get into a job, then after they get married, they're not able to pursue their professional career. So we have realized that this segment is growing. And in fact, when I visited Indore, you'll be surprised to know that 50% of a of membership of an audience like this would be women members. And when I asked uh, Man Manoj Fandizi, how come Indore is having so many members? He said, in Indore, we encourage our members to practice and they're extremely successful and the businessmen prefer to go to the, you know, our women members because they are able to deliver high quality of services. So we have realized that this is one segment which we need to support. So what we have decided is we'll be launching a flexi working portal for the women members. Let us say a woman member is able to work from 12 to 4 or maybe 2 to 5. She can register herself on the flexi portal and we'll make a request to all the member firms to look out for a neighborhood woman who is able to come and work with them. And we would like to popularize this flexi portal so that the women CAs can get network to the nearest CA firm. I think that is one initiative we will do for the benefit of the women members. And secondly, as one of our past presidents rightly said, women members have a very important role to play in the new Companies Act, where today on the boards of companies, one direct independent director should be a woman member. We would like to showcase to the corporate world, yes, 
our members are the most ideal to be on the boards of company. We are launching programs, capacity building programs across the country on training and empowering our women members to become independent directors. They need to know what are their duties, responsibilities and they need to understand that before they take the roles as independent directors, they need to have all the knowledge what is expected for them to be independent directors. And we'll create a panel of all the women members who have done this program and this is open to the corporate board and corporate world can choose any of our women members to serve on their boards and I'm sure many of our women members will get a huge opportunity in this particular area. A lot of activities are being planned but I'm just giving you one or two areas. Young members is another area of focus. 51% of our members are young, 35 years and below. As I told you, their needs are different, their aspirations are different. They are not interested in bank audit, they are not interested in tax audit, they are not interested in CNDG audits. And uh, in uh, Bangalore where I come from, when I interact with a lot of youngsters, you might be, you might be surprised to find that so many of them are doing so many new things. Startups is a very big consulting space in Bangalore. And I've seen many CAs in Bangalore focusing on startups, providing end-to-end -end services for all the startups, right from accounting, payroll, helping them in funding, compliance, everything end-to-end. And they're being paid fabulous, um, you know, uh, consulting fees for the services uh, running to startup. So I realized that the youngsters would like to do something different. They want to get into foreign technology. They want to get into international taxation. So what our young members empowerment committee would do is we'll try to identify what exactly are their requirements and we'll try to tailor them. And myself, seen as a young leader, I would like to focus on the young generation and want to give a flavor for our activities to see that yes, we are with you. We'd like to support you that, and I'm sure Praful uh, Chaje would. Uh, take the lead in this particular committee and drive a lot of new initiatives. And towards this, what we also propose to do is that we will uh, try to empower our members to get into practice. One big concern today is that many of them are not getting to practice. In a, uh, I'm sure in a city like Bombay, if you ask me how many child homes are specialized in indirect taxes, maybe you'll have about 100, 150. We need more and more people who, can, who have the knowledge of indirect taxes. We will try to focus on some areas and try to drive more and more people in this area. And then the next area of focus would be uh, students initiatives, 10 lakh students, there's no campus, long distance uh, training program is what we are giving, study material suggestions is what we give. Now we are going a step forward, we are using leveraging our technology, we want them to uh, have e-learning programs, webcasts for the students, we will have an e-diary, article chip training portal and everything will be available in an online mentoring. Let us say a person, Mr. Kale is free in the morning, let us say from Sunday is free for four hours, he could register on the online mentoring of the cloud campus and he could mentor a student sitting in Surat or sitting in Baroda. So we'll be launching a cloud campus where the entire student community will be connected to virtually to the cloud and all the offerings of the technology offerings of the Board of Studies will be weaved together and the entire student community would come to the cloud campus to get connected with each other. I'm sure this is something that is happening globally. And uh, we would like to make a beginning and uh, I had the opportunity of traveling the vice chairman of TCS who gave me this idea and he said, Mr. Rabu, your institute is such a big <coughs> institute, such a credible institute. You should set up a cloud campus for the CA Institute and the team is working and I'm sure in the next few months we will make this happen. And in addition to this, for the student community, we will be setting up 100 reading halls. We set up 30 last year when I was a vice president. We would like to see that 70 reading halls are set up and I'm happy that the Western India Regional Council has taken an excellent lead in this and set up many reading halls for the benefit of students. My compliments to the entire team for the number of reading halls the Western uh, the Western we have set up in Bombay and I'm sure all the branches will uh, continue to set up reading halls and the next thing which we plan to do is set up 50 high technology labs. Today we have 143 labs across the country but these labs are basic technology labs. We want to set up high-end labs where students get an exposure to auditing in a CBS environment. Today all the bank branches are under CBS. So if you are appointed as a concurrent auditor or a statutory auditor, you need to have the knowledge of working in a CBS environment. You need to have the knowledge of working in an ERP environment. You need to have the knowledge of working in a cloud computing environment. We'll be setting up 50 high technology labs for the students so that they are able to move quickly forward. Technology is something close to my heart. And as uh, our earlier speaker said, we launched a mobile app. 75,000 members have already downloaded this app. It's available on Android and Apple. I would request you to please download this. And we also launched a knowledge gateway. Institute has got so much of knowledge at its, available, at its disposal, we thought we should share it in the public domain and we have launched a knowledge gateway which is live and I would request you to please go to the knowledge gateway and you need not visit the main website, you can go to the knowledge gateway and download information of various committees that is available. So technology is something which we will work very hard, we will be setting up an ICI technology centre where we will be developing software for the members, today audit software is very expensive. 
we would like to begin developing software which would be useful for the members. We'll have a digital library for all of you where you can get a user ID and password and access a lot of online resources, either in direct access, indirect access. Infrastructure is high on our agenda. Mr. Kamlai Kamse talked about the fact that yes, infrastructure is very important. We have passed a robust infrastructure policy the day before in the council and I'm extremely delighted and happy to inform you that we'll have a lot of OC infrastructure projects rolling out and in the western region, we have already had many projects uh, that, are, that, that have come to us and I can assure all the branch chairmen that we'll just get started and see that the infrastructure projects continue to do. And here I'm sure uh, the council members will play a very important role in driving all these infrastructure projects and we'll see that um, you know we'll do a good job on the infrastructure front. Brand building, we would like to continue to do this. We have to build a good brand for the institute and I think each one of us can play a role in building a good brand. And finally friends, we would like to support our members Today, we receive a lot of applications from members in distress, spouses of members in distress. So we do not have adequate corpus in CA benevolent fund. So this year, we have decided to have an ambitious target. And recently, we had Mr. Mohandas Pai, who was on the board of Manipal Group, announcing a contribution of one crore to the CA benevolent fund. I was discussing with him during the Ferris State, during the inauguration of the Mango branch building and I told him, sir, I have a desire to build up the corpus of the CA Benevolent Fund and he said, Raghu, your target should be 100 crores and the first crore would be from me. So we are going about identifying people today. I have made a request to all the child accountants from the Western Region, the chairman, because Western Region, I know a chairman said, Western Region is the, you know, he was telling me that's the best region and it's the most prosperous region, I could say. <laughs> So when, uh, when a small place like Bangalore can get a uh, contribution of one crore, I just told our chairman that Bombay can add another 25 crores to the kitty. And he has, he has assured me that he will do this. For this, I require all your support. And finally, friends, we will work on research. Research is very critical. If we have to be an influencer to the government, we need to work on research. We are rolling out a lot of research projects for the benefit of the, uh, the stakeholders. And I'm sure all this would augur well for the profession. With these few words, I would like to thank all of you for a patient hearing. My only final request, a sign-off message to all of you is that this is my action plan, 12 strategic areas. You can decide where you can contribute. It's for you to decide. It's available on the website. You can just go through it. I've just given you a very sketchy presentation. I've articulated in a very simple manner, but you can go through in great detail. And you can tell me, send a mail to me, president at ICA.in, that yes, Mr. Abu, I'm ready to contribute here, and we'll be able to use your uh, content or take your services. You are welcome to reach out to me, you can call me, I am also on Facebook, I am on WhatsApp, I am available on mobile phone. So please reach out to me and we would like to see your active participation in the activities of the institute. And let us together as a family of 2,40,000 child accountants work together and take the institute to greater rights. Thank you very much.